All right, Peter, Liz Cheney co-headlined this event. I want to know, who does she draw? Who is on Liz Cheney's guest list to come to a Democratic rally? Yeah, it's rather remarkable, right? I mean, you never have expected this eight years ago that you would see the Cheney family, Dick Cheney, who was the vice president under George W. Bush, and Liz Cheney, who was the number three in the House Republican leadership, both as conservative as they come, endorsing Kamala Harris as a Democrat for president. But the reason why, of course, she made clear tonight, because there's something greater in her view than ideological differences. She still disagrees with Kamala Harris about a lot of things, about taxes, health care, all these normal policy differences that Democrats and Republicans have. But she understands or says that Kamala Harris is going to abide by the Constitution, and she doesn't think that Donald Trump will do that. And there are a number of Republicans out there who agree, the Nikki Haley Republicans, who continue to vote for Haley, even after she lost, after she dropped out of the primaries, still about 10 to 15 percent of Republicans were often voting in primary states for her, even when she wasn't a candidate, because they just can't stomach the idea of Donald Trump for another term. Now, is that enough to make a difference? We don't know, obviously. But it obviously, you know, is part of Kamala Harris's strategy to reach out not just to Democrats, not just to independents, but even disaffected Republicans saying there is a home for you. Cheney's words today, she has been a Republican longer than Donald Trump has been spray tanning. Dave, I want to share a little bit with V.B. Harris said today after Liz Cheney spoke. We must hold sacred America's fundamental principles, from the rule of law to free and fair elections to the peaceful transfer of power. If you share that view, no matter your political party, there is a place for you with us and in this campaign. This was all about getting those never Trump Republicans, independents, and swing voters. But from what you have seen and heard, is Kamala Harris's pitch to these voters vote against Trump, or is she offering those people something, giving them a reason to vote for her? It's more about voting against Trump. She went on to say that, that she believes that we need a stu too strong two-party system and we can get back to that. That's something you hear from never Trump Republicans. When you talk to them, they would love one day to be voting for not Paul Ryan exactly, but that version of the party in some capacity against Democrats. They don't think they can get there if Trump wins. Uh, the other part of what Harris is doing is trying to cut down the number of voters who think she is too liberal. That is a theme of Republican messaging. They have those clips from 2019 of Harris endorsing ideas that she no longer supports. Uh, I noticed some Republicans today retweeting Liz Cheney's post from 2019, highlighting those ideas, highlighting more left-wing Democratic ideas that Harris no longer runs on. And that's part of the strategy. If you dig into some swing state polling, uh, Harris, who was seen as very liberal in 2019, who is not that popular as vice president three months ago, uh, has been seen a little bit incrementally, one, as less liberal than she was a few months ago, less liberal than Donald Trump is seen as conservative, uh, and, and also narrowed the advantage that Trump has on the economy and on immigration. That is part of the strategy, too. Just look who I am with. Would this person be with me if I was the liberal that Donald Trump was putting in these campaign ads? Um, now, what is Cheney's pitch? What, what is she saying up there? There's two core messages that the Harris campaign wants Liz Cheney to be able to deliver and to reach some of these target voters that I'll tell you a little bit more about in just a second. But one is certainly this message of preserving democracy. Uh, someone, a Republican who served on the January 6th uh, committee, who led those hearings that laid out some of the most damning evidence about the actions of then President Trump in the lead up to January 6th and on the day itself. A lot of those which were now confirmed in the unsealed filing uh, that was filed by special counsel Jack Smith and Trump's election interference case. That is a core message. And I'll tell you, in our latest PBS News poll just out today, preserving democracy and the economy are two of the top issues for most American voters going into this election. So that's one group. The other group is this 20 percent of registered voters that tell us even today they are still swayable in some way. And I know people think, how at this point the election is anyone still swayable? If you break that down, some 15 percent of that 20 percent say, we think we know who we're voting for, but we could still change our mind. There's 5% that say we still have no idea. And for an election that will be won on the margins, there's opportunity that the Harris campaign sees in those voters. Peter, I want to talk about something new. Your paper, The New York Times, asked legal experts and found that some are worried about Donald Trump following through on his threats to prosecute opponents 
if he wins a second term. Can he really do that? Well, of course he can. Yeah, absolutely. Under the theory of executive uh, unitary power, by the way, <laughs> something that Dick Cheney once advocated, although I don't think he imagined using the uh, power of prosecution to go after enemies. But the point was that the executive controls the executive branch. That's the president of the United States. And that, therefore, a president can order the Justice Department to do things that we traditionally haven't seen them do. In the post-Watergate era, we have norms and standards that have separated the president of the United States and the White House from the Department of Justice when it comes to individual criminal cases, the idea being that politics shouldn't govern who we charge as criminals. Donald Trump has been very, made very clear that's not the way he sees things. He tried to do that in his first term time and time again. He, he publicly berated his own attorneys general, trying to get them to prosecute his enemies. They mostly refused to do so, although there were some instances where uh, you can make the argument that they comply with his wishes. And the second term, he's made clear he's planning to go after a whole broader scope of people he sees as enemies, people he says cheated on the election last time. Well, since we know of nobody who's actually been accused of cheating, that means he's accusing people who did their jobs, election workers, for instance, perhaps uh, uh, you know state officials, other people who refused to go along with his demands to change the outcome. They might face possible prosecution. He specifically said that the Brad Raffensperger, the Secretary of State of Georgia, that you could face criminal charges if you don't change the vote, he said in 2020. So there are lots of people out there who now have reason to fear prosecution. He said that Liz Cheney, getting back to, to who was on stage just tonight, should face a military tribunal. Why should she face a military tribunal? He didn't really explain, other than the fact that she broke with him. So he has made very clear that the idea of a second term for him is to use the power of government to go after adversaries, not for criminal actions, but for disloyalty to him. Well, J.D. Vance broke a little bit with Trump today, talking about the storm recovery efforts. Their answers were very different. Um, is that because J.D. Vance was with Glenn Youngkin, the governor of Virginia, who in current Republican terms is sort of a normie who's distanced himself from Trump? So, so J.D.'s more inclined to tell the truth next to Glenn? You know, I'm well, not sure if we know. Oh, I apologize, Dave. Go ahead. It's fine. No, no. It's fine. I was going to say that, uh, yeah, Youngin has endorsed Trump, but I'd watch this story develop because the first day's Trump argument about the, the storm was that it was being the region was being abandoned by the administration, and that didn't meet up with what Glenn Youngkin was saying, what Brian Kemp was saying. The ongoing story from Trump and surrogates is that money has been diverted to deal with immigrants. So they are still going to challenge the reality of what is happening on the ground. All right, let's talk about Melania Trump, because she now appears to be weighing in on reproductive rights. Here's what she posted. Without a doubt, there is no room for compromise when it comes to this essential right that all women possess from birth, individual freedom. What does my body, my choice really mean? My body, my choice, Amna, is Melania's new line. Donald Trump said on his plane he told her to write what she believed. It's amazing that she can do what she wants with her body, but women in other states, they can't. Well, what is going on here? Is the game plan just confuse people so they can't clearly say, yes, Donald Trump supports a federal abortion ban, because maybe not. Uh, Melania is saying something different. What's happening here? Look, this is stunning for a couple of reasons. One is that we rarely hear Melania Trump weighing in on these kinds of political issues. I mean, think about the number of times we've seen her out on the campaign trail, which is to say not at all. Uh, but also stunning because this clearly breaks with the rest of the party and where the Republican Party is right now. To your point, Stephanie, I think there's a lot of questions around Donald Trump's willingness to allow for some muddiness around where exactly he stands on a lot of these issues. We've seen him say one thing Thing on one day and then a few days later completely backtrack. And it is unclear to this day where exactly he stands on a lot of specific issues around reproductive rights. His own vice presidential candidate went out in an interview and said one thing about a national ban that Mr. Trump then came back later and backtracked and contradicted. So whether or not this is a strategy, I think that remains to be seen. But at the very least, it is stunning at this point in the election to see Melania Trump weigh in on an issue that's clearly a very strong mobilizing issue for Democrats.